So here we've got a binomial distribution where the uh, number of trials is 60 and the probability of success is 1 over 6. Now, to find out the critical region, um, we're going to do the following. As soon as we've written down our hypothesis tests, sorry, our hypotheses, we're going to write this sentence. Reject H naught if. The probability of getting, now you're going to copy the alternative, getting less than, and then you just write equal to as well. Um, less than or equal to some R, okay? We're going to write R here for region is less than 0 0.05. So always, we're going to basically turn that significance level into a decimal. So after you write the hypothesis, you always write this sentence, reject H naught if probability of getting less than or equal to R is less than 0 0.05. And basically our, our objective is to work out what is this R? Okay, what is that letter R? Such that getting less than it is just less than 0 0.05. So to work out this R, instead of just doing the long method and just, you know, doing trial and error and keep trying different values of R until we basically get a probability that's just less than it, we're going to go to our calculator. So we're going to go to a calculator and we're going to go to menu. We're going to click 7 and we're going to go to binomial CD. Okay, and we're going to click list. Okay, this is something you may have not seen before. Now, what this does is it actually gets the cumulative distribution table on our calculator. So we don't need to go to the book, basically. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the probably the first few values, right? I'm going to put one, two, three, um, up to seven, five, six, seven. I click equals and I'm going to put in my parameters. So the number of trials was 60 and probability of success was one over six. Now, when I click equals, bang, can you see that we've got the CD table on our calculator? Now, okay, what is the R then? Okay, what is the probability? Um, what is the X? What is the R? So that's again, less than it is just this less than 0 0.05. Remember, this table all gives you CD values. So this one actually means getting less than or equal to one is 2.3 times 10 to the power of minus four. This four means getting less than or equal to four is 0 0.0201. So it looks like four is basically our value. Okay, four is our value. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna write four and five. So I'm gonna write the probability of getting less than or equal to five was 0. 0.0512. Of course, 0 0.0512 is not is less than 0 0.05, it's bigger than 0 0.05. Okay, I'm, we always compare it to the significance level. Then I'm gonna write less than or equal to four, but the probability of getting less than or equal to four is 0 0.0201, and 0 0.0201 is less than 0 0.05. Therefore, the critical region is again we're going to copy the hypothesis uh, alternative we're going to write less than and then you add it equal to and then basically it's that value that we just found out for so for this um hypothesis test the critical region is r is less than or equal to four let's try the same method for the next question where the next question instead of having less than one over six is greater than one over six okay so this is a bit more steps to it i'm not going to say complicated but there's a bit more steps to it so what are we going to do remember it's the same thing 60 one over six and we're finding out the critical region um and um, our hypothesis test is turning to greater than one over six so we're working at the critical region for when the alternative hypothesis is p is greater than one over six I'm still going to write that same sentence. Reject H naught if the probability of getting. Now, I'm going to again we always copy the hypothesis, uh, alternative hypothesis, getting greater than and then or equal to um, R is, but then you always write less than the significance level, 0 0.05. 
Reject H0 if the property of X is greater than or equal to R is less than or uh, sorry, is less than 0 0.05. So we're trying to look for what is this R. Now, the only problem is your calculator only works with less than or equal to. Binomial CD is for less than or equal to when you have uh, binomial. So we kind of have to convert this into a less than or equal to type of uh, calculation. Greater than or equal to R, well, that's the same thing as one minus X is less than or equal to R minus one. So why is this the case? Um, it's to do with the fact that if I just break this down, I'm gonna have R and the one after R is R plus one, the one before R would be R minus one, just writing the consecutive numbers to R, and then R plus two, et cetera, et cetera, and R minus two, et cetera, et cetera. If I want um, greater than or equal to R, it's like I'm including R, right? And I want all of this. Well, isn't that the same thing as everything, all the probabilities added together, which is one, so everything just minus all of these values, okay? If you do everything minus R minus one and less, you're left with R and everything above it, okay? So that's basically why we wrote that. So, greater than to R is the same thing as this. So if that makes sense, we're basically, instead of uh, writing this, I'm gonna write one minus X is less than or equal to R minus one, is less than 0 0.05, okay? Greater than or equal to R is less than 0 0.05. It's the same thing as saying one minus X is less than or equal to R minus one is less than 0 0.05. So minus one to both sides. So what I'm gonna do right now is basically make this the subject. If I minus one to both sides, you end up with this is less than 0 0.05 minus 1 is minus 0 0.95. I'm going to times both sides by minus 1, and we're going to end up with this is the subject. This sign flips, and we end up with this. Now, this is something we can definitely work out. Okay, what is the value that is just getting less than it? It's just bigger than 0 0.95. This is what our calculator can work with. I'm going to go to the calculator and I want a very high probability really, isn't it? Getting less than something is 0 0.95. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just guess what values that could be. I'm just going to guess they are probably around, uh, let's say 14, 15, 16, I'm just going to try basically these values. You might have to do a bit of trial and error in this uh, situation. 19, let's just do up to 20. Equals, equals, and here we go. It looks like uh, we chose the right range. So remember, what is the value that's just bigger than 0 0.95? Oh, it looks like we just caught it. It's literally the 0, uh, it's the 15. So remember, we have to write both though. Even though it's 15, we should write getting greater than or equal to 14. Sorry, getting less than or equal to 14 was 0 0.9352. Getting less than or equal to 14 was 0 0.9352. And getting, which is not nice, because look, 9352 is less than 0.95 so that's not really the one we wanted we didn't want that one but getting less than equal to 15 was 0 0.9661 and is that good yes that is good because 0 0.9661 is bigger than 0 0.95 now what what is all of this for less than equal to 15 was just bigger than 0 0.95 so that means R minus one is 15 and R is 16. So 
Therefore, what is my critical region when r is greater than or equal to 16? So as you can see, there was definitely um, a few more steps involved when you've got upper critical region tests. Okay, so make sure that you try a lot of examples or a lot of questions on this type of critical region test where the upper tail, sorry, where the alternative hypothesis is when you have greater than the probability. Okay, so it's very important that you understand all these steps. And now if we just finish this off by doing a two-tailed test, which is going to include basically less than and greater than. So what we're going to do is, it'll be good practice for greater than as well. We'll just go through this. As soon as we've got our um, hypotheses, so for this situation, the number of trials is 40. The probability of success is one over four. Significance level stay the same. And we've got not equal to one over four. So when you've got not equal to one over four, you basically have to do a lower tail test and an upper tail test, okay? And find the critical region for the lower and upper. The first sentence I'm going to write, the first sentence I'm going to write is reject H naught if the probability of getting, so let's just do the lower version now, okay? Let's do the lower version now. Getting less than or equal to, let's call it R1, is less than, and you always do the significance level, right? Now, just remember, in a two-tailed test, you half the significance level. So less than 0 0.025. Okay, half of 5% is 2.5%, which is 0 0.025. Now, we just use the calculator to work out what this R1 is. So because it's um, new values, I'm going to assume that, again, let's just try from one to like seven, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm going to change this n and p because it's a different question now. Forty and one over four. Let's see if we found out something nice. Here we go. It looks like our R one was just four. Okay, getting less than or equal to 5 was 0 0.0432, which is not less than 0 0.025, right? 0 0.0432 was greater than 0 0.025, so that's, that wasn't nice. But less than or equal to 4 was 0 0.016. 0 0.016 is less than 0 0.025, so R1... So let's write the, what is the critical region for the lower bit? Is when R1 is less than or equal to, what was the nice one? It was four. So we just done the lower tail critical region. We're going to now do, in the same question, okay, it's not like a new question. In the exact same question, we're just gonna do the upper version. So I'm gonna write the upper version of the statement, reject, page not if probability of getting greater than or equal to let's call it r2 in fact to be fair we could have just called it r because really and truly it's all going to be one region but it doesn't really matter too much getting greater than or equal to r is less than 0 0.025 as well okay so as you can see these two should add up to the significance level so what is this R? Remember, your calculator only works with less than or equal to, so you're going to have to change this, right? How do we change this? Um, remember, this is the same thing as... We want to work out what this is. We're going to change less than or equal to R2. 1 minus this, less than or equal to R minus 1. Less than 0 0.025. Then we fix it and make this the subject. How do you make it the subject? Minus 1 to both sides. Minus 0 0.975, this will become times both sides by minus 1. And there we go. We've made the, I've uh, made a little mistake. This was supposed to be, I was supposed to copy that. This is greater than or equal to R. 
uh, which is what we're fixing, right? Because we made it less than each time. So getting after we times both sides by minus one, the minuses go away. And we're left with x is less than or equal to r minus one. But because we times both sides by minus one, this flips and we get the 0 0.975. Now we just work out what this is in our calculator. So what is the r minus one? What is the value that's just bigger than 0 0.975? What I'm going to do is I'm going to again just guess some values. I'm going to try from 15 to 20. Again, I think I did that same last time. Let's just try this. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 equals equals uh, equals again. Let's see what happens. Yes, again, it looks like I was lucky and I did find the actual borderline. So I'm going to say that. I'm going to say the following. Getting less than or equal to 15 or 0 0.9737 and 0 0.9737 is not greater than 0 0.975. So remember, that's not a good one. But getting less than or equal to 16 is 0 0.9884. And this is good because why is it good? 0 0.9884 is bigger than 0 0.975. That was good. So therefore what? That means the upper critical region is when R is greater than or equal to 16. And basically, there we have it. Our critical region for this test is both of these things. Critical region is R is less than or equal to 4 and, or you can say or, R is greater than or equal to 16.